so in the previous video we have learned about the concept mathematical basic mathematical understanding of the chalit chakra bhava kundali chalit kundali whatever you call it and what are the apparent issues that i find into it now going further than this as i told in the previous video itself jyotish pratyaksha shastram surya chandrama yatra sakshino astrology is a shastra whose result can be seen through the eyes and sun and moon are the evidence witnesses to it hath kangan ko rc kya padhe likhe ko farsi kya this rc is not the registration certificate of the vehicle but is mirror rc means mirror so hath kangan ko rc kya if you have wear a good bangle in your hands you don't need a mirror to see how beautiful it looks because hands you can see yourself <clears throat> and padhe likhe ko farsi kya the one who is well understood well read for him even the farsi language is not difficult probably it seems like that the muhavara is from the arabic times when farsi was popular in india otherwise to a sanskrit speaking sage what is the purpose of having the knowledge of farsi right in this video now we will take some example horoscopes and we will try to see both from the method of sripati and both from the method of placidus regarding how the planets are changing and what is the actual result that is happening we will first take the example of henry ford the great businessman i believe all of you know now generally i take a north indian and a south indian horoscope setup but here i have taken rashi chart on the top and chalit chakra and the second setup this chalit chakra i am using lagna to be the central point and lagna to be the middle point right this is generally the setup that is used in vedic astrology first we are using porifery house sripati paddhati from the sripati paddhati you come to see that venus which was situated in the ascendant earlier this is the wikipedia article i will be referring to the wikipedia article for henry ford i will be referring to much of the information we people already know so that is what will help us right now the thing right what people will say generally people who practice uh, bhava chalit their opinion is that the bhava of the planets change right though the rashi remains the same so this venus which have gone to the second house in the bhava chalit chart it should be considered as a venus situated in leo but in the second house so not to make the video as large as the previous video i will not do a lot of bisection dissection into it i will just take the bhava results into consideration now bhava results dasha results can be taken into consideration and analysis can also be taken into consideration i will try to confine myself to analysis only right so that you understand that the result that is seen through the horoscope which is correct right the analysis part not talking of venus you see in the horoscope venus is the lord of 10th house if we take this venus to be situated in the lagna does it make a better raja yoga that he is having or if we take venus to be in the second house that makes a better raja yoga now certainly someone can say oh 10th lord the lord of profession is going into the second house of income so see he have earned a lot of money from his profession but i should i will tell you that my purpose and as you all of you know that i confine with classical astrology of sages only right so we should see what the sages have told that particular principle raj yoga means dominance power authority 10th lord in the ascendant will indicate person is professionally very successful the person enjoys raj yoga and henry ford have dominance when the ford motor comp how ford motor company survived and how it you know its competition with olds mobile buick and all of these companies that were prominent at that point of time clearly reflects that the raj yoga is very strong 
टेंथ लॉर्ड इन लगना गिव्स अ लॉट ऑफ सक्सेस दैट हेनरी फोर्ड हैड एंड टेंथ लॉर्ड इन एसेंडेंट आल्सो मेक्स दैट पर्सन वेरी फेमस व्हिच हेनरी फोर्ड इज ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ यू टेक टेंथ लॉर्ड टू बी इन द सेकंड हाउस टेक्निकली ट्रेडिशनली एज पर द क्लासिकल सिस्टम टेंथ लॉर्ड इन सेकंड हाउस नाइदर मेक्स धन योग नॉर इट मेक्स अ राजयोग सो द रिजल्ट इज नॉट करेक्ट सेकेंडरली वीनस इज द लॉर्ड ऑफ थर्ड हाउस Now, if third lord is going into ascendant, it will tell that the person is very courageous, and he will do something that is, you know, very exceptional, very phenomenal. Is this the correct result? Or when you take third lord to be in the second house, then you say third is the house of struggle, second is the house of finances, and any house you see the basic principle, any house where the third, sixth, eighth, twelfth lord is going, or any house lord going into these houses, that house is weak. So, if you take the third lord to be in the second house, you are also saying that okay, second house is afflicted; his finances should be weak, which is not the actual case. On the other hand, if you take the third lord to be in the ascendant, you will say the native is courageous, and you will say that okay, the body can be little bit weak. Next, so Henry Ford was a slim person throughout his life, as far as I know. Second thing that is changing is the position of Rahu Ketu and the position of Jupiter as well. So Jupiter goes from second house to third house. Now you see, <clears throat> Henry Ford lived for eighty-three years. That is a long life. Now, if you consider eighth lord in second house, expecting the eighth house back, you can say that one will have long life because eighth house indicate longevity. On the other hand, if you take Jupiter to be in the third house, it will be eighth lord is situated in third house, and as per the basic principle, wherever six or twelve house lord goes, they Disturb the house, destroy the house, weaken the house because third house is also the house of longevity. Eighth from eighth, eighth house is house of longevity, and eighth from eighth is also the house of longevity, right? Pure to that for the opinion. So, as per the second statement of eighth lord going into third house should afflict the third house because of which Henry Ford should meet with many accidents which did not happen, and a lord of eighth house going into third house should afflict the third house of longevity and should give weakness to the eighth house of longevity, which should give him a short life. Longevity, which should give him a short life, which was not the case. He lived for eighty-three years. Secondary, Jupiter is the fifth lord. If you take Jupiter to be in the fifth, third house, it will be fifth lord is going into third house. Any planet going into three, six, eight, twelve house should be considered weak because of which, because fifth house indicates intelligence. It should be taken as Henry Ford was not intelligent. He and intelligence, you see, intelligent is for childrens only. For young people, it is vision. For elder people, it is vision. You should say that Henry Ford is not a visionary, which was not the case. I believe Ford is the only company which is still owned by the original family which started it. Right? They have a strong voting rights in the organization, which is not true for many other automobile companies. Right? So the result of fifth lord going into the third house where he should be weak, being in Hindustan, is not correct. On the other hand, if you take the original setup of Fifth Lord going in the second house. What you will find that okay, second house indicates wealth. Fifth house indicate intelligence. So person earned money from his intelligence, from his vision, which is also true. Right? Saturn Jupiter combination. Saturn is the Lord of the seventh house. Saturn is the Lord of the sixth house. It is conjoined with the. One more thing is there. If you take Venus to be with Saturn, one more point. Venus with Saturn indicates perversion in the sexuality of the person, which I believe Henry Ford was not having. I don't think that there is any mention of affair in his. There is only mention of public affairs in his complete biography. There is no mention of affair otherwise in his biography, right? So he was not a sexually loose moral person, which generally Saturn Venus combination should indicate, right? on the other hand if you take the combination of saturn jupiter to be in the case you will find out that it will be a combination between 7th house 6th house 5th house and 8th house a combination between these houses right should not be considered a very good combination as such right so the bad results of it right should come in the family second house right which is more or less very true as well you can read his biography also right that is one thing now if you just go to regarding rahu ketu rahu ketu is situated in 410 axis and those who have learned from me they know 
that because ketu is also a planet of agni tattva and uh, i believe that the digbal of planet is dependent on the tattvas of the planet i will take this ketu to be very good in the 10th house which indicates great professional success which will not be the case if you take ketu to be in the 11th house which will indicate person earns through mistake person earns money but he earns money through um, those sources from where he don't expect to earn money which is not true for henry ford as we all know he planned something and he earned money out of it and there was no surprise accidental or wealth from you know lottery etc that happened to him what i am trying to say that if ketu is there then sudden money surprise money because of lottery someone's death etc comes to pass right so in such a way you should note down the predictive principles that i am using as well then the video will be more benefiting for you if i use kp krishna murti paddhati the setup remains the same that i have already explained it to you right now what else happen is saturn also goes in the third house yeah. once again you don't have to change the rashi so when saturn goes into third house what you will see that sixth lord is going in the third house and applying the same principle any planet who is going in the third house the rashi owned by that planet becomes weak so seventh house should become weak sixth house should become weak and by sixth house becoming weak he should have diseases he should have diseases weakness from diseases that he was not having that is one thing secondarily seventh lord becoming weak his marriage should not be good which was not the case henry ford married clara jane bryant right who lived up to 1950 henry ford died in 1947 so marital life more or less is a good marriage right and i don't believe there was any infidelity or anything in the relationship right this is one thing if the seventh lord is weak then wife should be weak spouse should be weak and a weak spouse means spouse should suffer from health issues he was not suffering from health issues early death can be there that was not the case the spouse can be a type of person who is not able to support the native which was also not the case that should also be considered in weakness they got married in 1888 henry ford is born in 1863 the marriage happened at the age of 25 if the seventh lord is weak marriage should happen late which was not the case considering the time of henry ford the time of 1863 marriage around the age of 25 when he got married 25 26 we should take because he is uh, in july he is born in april he is getting married so 25 is the age that he was running and at his time in 1863 it should be considered as a middle marriage i have told i i have i have talked about this in a recent video i don't know it will be uploaded before this video or later this video but i have talked about this particular fact that if the seventh lord is situated in conifer houses the marriage happens in middle ages right so if you take seventh lord saturn to be in the second house marriage happening in middle ages is matching but if you take saturn to be in the third house it will go into panavar sorry it will go into apokalim this should indicate marriage is happening late which is not the case 25 cannot be told as late according to his times i believe 30 should be told as late nowadays 30 is told as marriage in middle ages this was the example of henry ford and i am trying to keep the complete setup as uh, as concise as it uh, can be right but at the same point of time not compromising with what i have to explain right so uh, rest you can read the biography and you can further uh, do further inquiries on it as well right now we go to the dasha i'm using standard vimshatri from moon what 80% of the astrologers use You see, first changing planet Jupiter, eighteen ninety six to nineteen hundred twelve. From both the Bhava systems, Jupiter is coming in the third house. But I do not have a detailed, you know, detailed timeline in of his life as such. But what we know for certain that in eighteen ninety nine, he starts his business. Detroit Automobile Company. He starts. This is where he is starting his business, right? Before that, he have 
had some work. This is where the Detroit automobile company is starting, which is later on becoming Ford. Now, the result of Jupiter. Will you attribute this result to a benefic planet situated in the second house, making the person start a business? From the second house, Jupiter will also aspect the fifth house. <clears throat> Sorry, with his ninth aspect, he will also aspect the tenth house. Whether you will attribute the start of a business to this planet, or you will take Jupiter to be situated in the third house from where he is having no connection with the tenth house, and third house does not indicate wealth as such. From there, you will say that this person is starting a business. <clears throat> from where you will attribute it. I take third house to be business as well. But in that scenario, eighth lot situated in third house cannot be the, you know, be, be the thing which indicates business. My principle is that if third lot is powerful, it does indicate one is successful in business. If you take Bhavchal, if you take Venus to be in the second house, if you take it Virgo, third lot will not be strong, which will tell you that business is not successful. Uh -huh. Sorry. But the concept is that the Rashi should not be changed. So I'm sticking to what knowledgeable people, what Gyani people say, right? <laughs> Just sticking with that. You can take the logic that, okay, if Jupiter comes to the third house, it will be situated in the another Rashi of the 10th Lord. But you see, you are not, you don't have to take the Rashi. So certainly that you don't have to do. In 1903 itself, he released the first model for the Ford organization, Ford Model A, which was very successful. This is what makes the wave. In 1908, he releases Ford Model T. So these two major releases, Ford Model A, Ford Model T, which becomes a successful model, A Model T, which becomes successful, which makes his firm name as an automobile manufacturer, still launched in this Jupiter period. Now you tell me planets, benefic planets situated in the second house, giving wealth, expecting the 10th house indicates the result or the placement in third house should indicate the result. For the period of Saturn, I don't have a very major result as such with respect to the period of Saturn. So apparently that is not something that we are going to take. Now, in the Rahuvian period 1878 to 1896, four things are happening. First machine job at the age of 16, he is taking on 1st December 1879. Marriage is happening on 11th April 1888. Major project running first engine with electricity, he did on 24th December 1893. And birth of the sun. Edsel happens in 1894, who dies in 1944 before his death, own death. Right, This happens while Rahu is situated in the fourth house. Malefic planet connected to the fourth house generally gives marriage. Is a principle that I should tell you. Any planet connected to the fourth house can also give marriage, provided the fact that the Rashi Lord is also connected to marriage factors. If you take Rahu to be in the now, see, you go by my principle, right? How I tell you to predict with respect to Rahu. Rahu gives result as per the planet situated with them, expecting them, Rashi Lord. There is no planet with Rahu. Mars is expecting Rahu. Saturn is expecting Rahu. So Mars is going to give result of. So Rahu is going to give result of both Mars and Saturn. With the aspect of Saturn, because Saturn is the Lord of the seventh house. Rahu is giving result of Saturn. He gets married on, married on 11th April 1888 to Clara Bryant. Saturn is with Jupiter, the lord of the fifth house. Sun Edsel is born in 1894. This is all happening in Rahu Desha. Right? Running first engine with electricity and getting first machine job at the age of 16 is also happening in Rahu Desha in the year 1879-1893. Because Rahu is also giving result of Mars by being under the aspect of Mars and Mars is situated with 10th lord Venus. This clarifies the point. If you take this Rahu to be in the situated in the fifth house, it will tell you the event related to childbirth, which happened at the fag end of Rahu Dasha in 1894, the last event. But the first three events of start of a job, start of a job in marriage, it will not indicate. You can say that, okay, Rahu will be expecting Venus, that is the Lord of the 10th house. Right? So uh, the two events related to job is indicated. But what about marriage? You can say that the dispositor of Rahu is situated with, Sat situated with Saturn, but in this scenario, once again, what I say, 
right? That you have to use a lot of principles, a lot of via, via, via principles to predict the result. Now you see, right now what I have done in my analysis, I have clearly told, okay, it is situated with the Lord. It is this, it is that. It is very clear. Right. Other set of analysis that we are giving, okay, okay, Rahu is expecting Venus, Venus is uh, the, the dispositor of Rahu is Saturn, Saturn. Uh, sorry, the dispositor of Rahu is Jupiter, Jupiter is situated with Saturn, Saturn is the seventh house lot. This is via via principle. While we have this horoscope in front of us, we have the event, we can predict it. But otherwise we cannot. So if you say simple application, direct application, it will happen when you use the horoscope as it is not using silly chakra. The basic point that I am telling you. This should be very clearly understood. Right? Remaining the planetary position that is changing that you know. And you can check accordingly with respect to whether it is working or not. Right? Which is giving you better results. Right? The horoscope is in front of you. What more I say? Right? You can see things yourself. Next is the horoscope of a businessman, Richard Branson. Probably few of you will know him. As a millionaire kind of a person. First we go with Sripati system and from the Sripati system you will find that sun, which is situated in the first house, goes to the twelfth house. Now sun is the lord of second house. He is a business tycoon. This is virgin group. Right. Virgin group is a like a millionaire kind of a person. He is right now. Sun is the lord of the second house. In original horoscope, second lord is in the ascendant, which makes the dhani yoga. In Sripati Bhavachali, the periphery house system, second lord goes to 12th house. Does this indicate the person will be rich? The person will have wealth? I don't think so. The first thing, secondarily, what is happening? Mars is coming from third house to fourth house. Now, Mars. Is the Lord of the 5th house. Mars is the Lord of the 10th house. Now 10th Lord situated in 3rd house. And Mars is a malefic. Malefic isn't good in Nupcha. Malefic is good in 3, 6, 10, 11 houses. If you take Mars to be in the 4th house. It will indicate that his personal life is disturbed. And not only personal life. Malefic in the 4th house will also indicate. He is not having property vehicle etc. He is struggling with respect to property vehicle etc. He is Richard Branson. He is a millionaire. He is owner of Virgin Group. Virgin operate flights as well. There is Virgin aerospace as well. So he have aeroplanes that many people don't have even who have benefits in the fourth house, right? So Mars in the fourth house cannot be taken. On the other hand, if you take Mars to be in the third house, right, he have three children, one of that child is deceased, right? So third lord, so fifth lord going in the third house, which is a bad house where the weakness is there, does indicate that one child is deceased. And he is still alive, right? So one child is deceased in front of him, which is a very bad result for a parent. Right? Also, 10th Lord situated in the third house is not a very good setup. But for Malefic, Upche has a good placement. All of this principle is nothing new. I have talked about it in my previous videos. All of my students are very well familiar with these techniques. From the third house with his 8th aspect, he is also expecting the 10th house, making him very successful in his profession. Right? Which is also the result. If you take the Krishna Murti system, almost everything remains the same as discussed earlier. Saturn comes to the third house. From the second house, just everything else, the condition is same. Now, Saturn, if you take the Saturn to be in the second house, this will be seventh lord in second house, this will be eighth lord in second house, and eighth lord from the second house will be inspecting the eighth house back, giving him a long life. He is 74, right? He is born in 1950. He is around 74 years of age. He is still alive. So long life is already seen. Using the same principle that we used in the horoscope of Henry Ford, if you take 8th Lord to be in the 3rd house, any planet in 3, 6, 8, 12 house is considered weak. This week, now you will say, sir, uh, you said Mars in the 3rd house. There you are saying that Malefic Nupchaya is good. Uh, now you are saying that, uh, no, sir, the eighth lord is going into third house, eighth lord is bad. Mars in the third house, because it is a malefic, should be considered as good. Saturn coming in the third house as a malefic, it should also be considered as good, but for his house lordship. Because when the eighth lord goes into third house, it is also eighth from the eighth house. For this reason, this is bad. Right? As per malefic in the third house, that is good. 
Malefic in the third house makes the person courageous and for anyone to be successful in business, there needs a lot of courage. He's already having a Maras Ketu in the third house. Why you need Saturn there? Right. Eighth Lord not expecting the eighth house. Eighth Lord going in eighth from the eighth house should give him a short life that he is not giving. Apart from that, Saturn as a Malefic is good in the third house. That should give him courage. Right. But the result is not matching with longevity. Regarding courage, courage can be given by Mars Ketu also. With respect to Mars, Mars is good in Upchaya, right? That is there, but the success, more than success should be attributed less to the position of Mars and more to the aspect of Mars over his own Rashi. And this is the point. Then you should note. Secondarily, Saturn is also the Lord of 8th house. Sorry, Saturn is also the Lord of 7th house. If 7th Lord goes into 2nd house, now 7th Lord in 2nd house is not entirely bad for marriage, I will not say. Because 8th house being the house of longevity, if there is a benefit there, it is good. Malefic is problematic. So what was happening in the case of Henry Ford, that 7th Lord was in 8th house, but it was with a benefic Jupiter, it saved his marriage. But for Richard Branson, 7th Lord is going in the 8th house, which mark with moon and because moon is very close to sun. Right. It is a weak moon, a moon of Shugla Chaturthi, a weak moon and a moon of Arikta Tithi also, which should be considered as 7th Lord and 8th house from the 7th house with a malefic and from the perspective of 7th house, it should be considered that 8th house is having two malefics, which leads to bad marriage. Right. He is quite known for having private beaches and having part, having, you know, like you know, things such as infidelity, etc. He is quite known for that. In fact, he is twice married, first to Christian, Christian Tomasi, and second to Joan Templeman, right? So two women he is married to, right? So once again, we see that if we just take the original horoscope without considering the Bhavachari, the analysis is clear as compared to what will happen otherwise. If we try to see the Shah's son is between 1973 to 1979, in this period, divorce is happening. I believe after 1979 itself, so not exactly in the period, I'm not very sure about when the divorce actually happened. 22nd July 1972 marriage is happening, that is happening in Venus Dasha itself and divorce is uh, happening in 1977, the time is not very clear. Right, uh, first marriage uh, significant, November 1977, first marriage is, right, 1979 is written in Wikipedia, 1977 is from some other source. It should be more or less a result of sun only because in any case it will be the Sandhi period. Now if you take sun to be in the ascendant, it will be a malefic influencing the seventh house. Which should indicate break of marriage in this period. If you take sun to be in the twelfth house, he will not be influencing the seventh house or seventh lord. Then how you will say that in this period divorce is happening. Another event, like other events are uh, out of the span, I believe. Right. So many events, uh, I, as I told you, I don't have a detailed biography of his, right? detailed timeline of his life. But other events you can see yourself. I have not made a detailed timeline just to save the time. Right? But all the events are matching. I have, if I am telling you something, I am telling it only after testing on multiple horoscopes, right? So now I'll leave it upon to you to read the Wikipedia biography and do further researches on this. We quickly jump to our third horoscope, which is the horoscope of Agatha Christie. Now Agatha Christie we first go by Shri Patiyan system. What is the change happening? Ketu is coming to Lagna. Apart from that, Ketu Rahu is coming in the 17 axis. Apart from that, everything else is same. Now, Rahu Ketu, when they come to ascendant, particularly when Ketu comes to ascendant, it should make the person very intuitive and all sort of things that is there. But because the result of Rahu and Ketu depends on the planet, they are associated with, expected by, etc. The basic principle that I use, Ketu comes to the ascendant, it should give result like Mars. Whereas when Ketu is in the 12th house, it should give a love for mystery, etc. This is what Ketu indicates which is actually the case, right? So that is something that is 
that that is something that i believe is but and that is something that is better ketu in the 12th house rahu in the 6th house also because she was primarily you know murder on the orient express the murder of uh, rogar death on the nile murder at visrage all of these things is very much very much related to murder mystery detective story crime fiction thriller is what she was writing and with rahu in the 6th house rahu in the 6th 8th 12th house is person is interested into such things such gore things of murder mystery etc it is indicated by this placement of rahu ketu in 6 12 only right if rahu or ketu is there in one seven houses then generally what i have seen is the person is quite afraid of such things murder mystery detective story crime fiction etc thriller they are very quite afraid of it they are actually those people who think that if you think good if you talk good then good will happen and they actually they you know save they want to not get into these things they save themselves from negative thoughts etc is what i have seen from experience as well right to further go deeper into it we can look for dasha now regarding in, in this dasha setup between 1904 to 1922 rahu dasha is coming in this period 20 yeah in the period of rahu she publishes the mysterious affair of styles she gets married and she have birth of a daughter as well now regarding the aspect of marriage if you take rahu to be in the 7th house it will come in the house of marriage this is seen if you take rahu to be in the 6th house it will be aspecting the 7th lord which will also indicate the 7th lord mercury which is also indicating the marriage so that is very correct if you take rahu to be in the 7th house it will be aspected by the 5th lord mars which indicates child birth if you take rahu to be in the 6th house it will be aspected by jupiter the significator of the child so that also indicates birth of a daughter that is very correct but a debilitated jupiter aspecting rahu indicates birth of a female child and a mars aspecting because mars is a male planet debilitation indicates a female child right that is the principal exaltation indicates a male child always by standard mars influencing the rahu should indicate a male child but the daughter was born Ros rosalind I, i think if i'm not taking the name correctly pardon me for that right so when you go deeper into it the gender of the child is will justify and if you take rahu to be in the 6th house right but marriage and child birth are those two events which is very clearly indicated by rahu both in the 6th house and 7th house right so sometimes such confusing things also happen because of this reason i highly recommend people that if you want to succeed in astrology see more than 10 horoscopes and generally of horoscopes people not connected to you only then you will be able to succeed but the publication of mysterious affair of styles which i believe should be the first uh, text that she is writing i believe if i am not uh, incorrect Was short story, first novel, so of a desert. So this should be a significant event, right? The mysterious affair of Stein should be a serious event. Now, only if you take Rahu to be in the sixth house, there you will see that Rahu is expecting the tenth house and tenth Lord Mercury, both indicating that a great publishing, a great release, which will bring much name, fame, and status, will come in this period. If you take Rahu to be in the seventh house, this should not be the result. Though seventh house is the house of fame. but rahu being a malefic should damage it right and should not support it either ways regarding the period of ketu it is coming between 1974 to 1981 in this period only death is happening right 19th uh, january 1976 she died now if you take ketu to be in the ascendant generally planet situated in ascendant does not indicate the death until and unless it is afflicting the lagna lord that he will not do because lagna lord is in the second house but planet situated in the 12th house the classical principle is planet situated in the marak house will be the killer if not then the planet connected with the marak planets will be the killer if not then the planet in the 8th house will be the killer if not then planet in the 12th house will be the killer right this is the order and this is not the order that i am making right this is the order of udai pradeep so if you take ketu to be in the 12th house you can say that yes death have happened at this point of time right if you take ketu to be in the ascendant death you cannot tell because in ascendant ketu will be conjoined with mars and mars is not a marak marak is the planet who is the lord of second and seventh house and mars is lord of none of them right another setup is when you go by kp system venus 
sorry, a moon is coming to the ninth house. Now moon coming to the ninth house, it is eighth lord coming in the ninth house. When eighth lord comes to ninth house, it should make the native unfortunate, right? Because eight house indicates misfortune, ninth house indicates fortune, and it should destroy the combination which is being made by Sun and Saturn. Which combination is being made by Sun and Saturn? It is a combination of second and the ninth house, which indicates Dhanu Yoga. Right, six, eight, twelve house, third, six, eight, twelfth house, Lord going into any Dhan Yoga or Raj Yoga destroys the Dhan Yoga or Raj Yoga. Basic standard principle: it should be destroyed if Moon comes to the ninth house, which is not actually the case. Right. On the other hand, if you take Moon to be in the tenth house itself, it will be eighth Lord in the tenth house, which is bad for profession. I always say eighth Lord in eighth, uh, tenth Lord in eighth or twelfth house, or eighth or twelfth Lord in tenth house person is not suitable for nine to five job. They should do a job, which is like you know. In which you can be called any time, such as police income tax offset, etc., or a job like writing, etc., where you are writing at home, right? And once the once the work is done, you are producing it, filmmaker, etc., right? Such unconventional professions where you are not working for three, four months at a stretch and then working a lot in some time for some time at a stretch, right? Such type of unconventional profession which is not bounded by a timetable is good when the 8th or 12th, 8th or 12th Lord is going in the 10th house or 10th Lord is going into the 8th, 12th house. This is what I say. And if you take, this should be done. This is done is the prediction, right? This should be done because only this is going to work. Now, keeping in mind that Agatha, Agatha Christie is very successful, right? So why we are doing astrology, right? The purpose is that through astrology, you will know what works for you, right? It is as for astrology, it is always told that by the help of astrology, you sail your boat in the way of the wind. So you want to know when will wind will flow in which direction you have to use astrology. Right. So because she is successful, you should say that she have followed what she should follow, and one will fo one should follow what is indicated in their horoscope, right? So when I say that 8th and 12th Lord going into 10th house, one should do such profession. I mean to say that one will be successful only when one does such profession. So that is a suggestion that is a type of remedy. And because she is successful, she should have done that. right? And that, that is the case that we know as well. With respect to Dasha, as the Dasha of Moon is coming right in the beginning, 1887, 1897. Right now, it is just a time of birth. I don't have many events for this time as such. But... For the person to be successful, the birth dasha, this is standard principle, this works quite well. You see the house where the birth dasha lord is situated in, that is the theme of the life. So if you take the moon to be situated in the 10th house, we will say that this person is very successful. On the other hand, if you take moon to be in the 9th house, you will say that person is very fortunate, though she is very fortunate, certainly with respect to profession, etc. But in her marriage, she had not been very profession as uh, in her profession, she had not been much successful as such. So if you take moon to be in the 10th house, it will clearly indicate that she is much awarded, honored and successful. That is what is matching with her life as well. So in the horoscope of Agatha Christie also we understand that if you if we go by normal horoscope analysis based on the Rashi chart, ignoring the Chalit Chakra, that is what works best, right? Horoscope, we take off Margaret Thatcher. In our horoscope, we go to Sripati system first. Sripati system, you see Ketu, which is situated in the fourth house, comes to third house. Right? That is the only change that is happening. Rest everything else is same. Rahu is leaving the tenth house. Ketu is coming to the third house. Rahu is going to nine. Rahu and Ketu is going into three nine axis, right? Which is originally in the four ten axis. Now regarding Rahu and Ketu, Malefic is good in Upche. Rahu in the 10th house is good. Rahu Ketu, both of them, whichever is in the 10th house, that is good. Melifi Nupche makes the person not only successful, but Melifi Nupche also makes the person courageous. I believe she was known as uh, Iron Lady. Rahu in the 10th house indicates that. On the other, 10th house indicates that. On the other hand, if you take Rahu to go in the 9th house, then in that particular scenario, it should indicate a irreligious type of a person, which I believe she was not. 
राइट रिगार्डिंग द पॉइंट दैट राहु एंड केतु गिव रिजल्ट ऑफ द प्लैनेट दे आर एस्पेक्टेड विद कंजॉइंट बाय राहु इन द 10th हाउस इज एस्पेक्टेड बाय सैटर्न दे आर नॉट कंजॉइंट विद एनी प्लैनेट एस्पेक्टेड बाय सैटर्न सैटर्न इज द लॉर्ड ऑफ 4th एंड 5th हाउस तो राहु गिविंग रिजल्ट ऑफ सैटर्न हु इज अ राज्यकारी प्लैनेट बीइंग सिचुएटेड इन द 10th हाउस डज इंडिकेट राज्य व्हिच व्हेन राहु गोस टू द 9th हाउस विल नॉट इंडिकेट बिकॉज़ देन इट विल बी एस्पेक्टेड बाय जुपिटर and jupiter who is the lord of the third and the ninth house if his influence taken by rahu is influencing the ninth house should indicate that she is unfortunate which she was not regarding ketu being in the fourth house ketu being as ketu is not conjoined by any planet ketu is not aspected by any planet ketu is giving result of rashi lord rashi lord is saturn so ketu should give result of saturn which should indicate it is fourth lord in fourth house which does indicate good family life which actually she was having and i believe she is one of the very rare examples of a very good marriage it is also fourth uh, fifth lord in it is also like when ketu will give result of saturn because saturn is also the fifth lord it will be also like fifth lord in fourth house right ketu giving result of saturn saturn being the fifth lord makes an indirect connection between saturn and ketu and as i always say when ketu is connected to the fifth house it gives twin children she is having twin children mark and carol right so that is also indicated on the other hand if you take ketu to be in the third house though ketu is a malefic but in the third house it makes the person timid that she was not no ketu i take as a benefic right so in the third house it should be taken as jupiter and ketu in the third house no jupiter is third lord in third house third lord in third house will make the person courageous so jupiter in third house does not matter as such but when you also take ketu to be in the third house because ketu is a timid planet ketu is a beneficial planet it should indicate she is timid or it you can say that third lord in third house the person is courageous but ketu is making timid so the person is courageous only at times but it is not the case she is told iron lady she is told iron lady because of some reason and owing to the same reason i believe that she it should not be taken as being situated in the third house it should be taken as being situated in the fourth house moon we ignored moon we ignored moon and mars actually right moon is also coming to 10th house now moon as 10th lord in 10th house is good right on the other set up 10th lord going in the 11th house moon is also good 10th lord in 11th house does indicate the person is having good professional status and gains a lot of things from his or her profession which is actually true if you take 10th lord to be in the 10th house that will also indicate the person is highly positioned in his profession so in both the cases it is correct no issues in that regard right but another planet is mars originally mars is situated in the 12th house and chilch chakra it is coming in the 11th house mars is the lord of 7th house 7th lord in 12th house is not a very good setup but mars from 12th house will aspect the 7th house back so 7th lord influencing the 7th house should indicate good marriage which is actually the case on the other hand 7th lord in 11th house like you know 7th lord in 11th house also does not indicate bad marriage but not as good as 7th lord expecting the 7th house right you know that that is one thing also mars here is the lord of the second house as well so second lord in 12th house she is not known much for her wealth as such her economic policy is quite criticized right which is clear if you take that second lord to be in the 12th house right if you take second lord to be in the 11th house she should be very rich but she is not someone who is known for riches as such mercury which is an ascendant goes to 12th house in the chalit chakra now mercury going in the 12th house that is the ninth lord going in the 12th house rashi you are not supposed to change right so ninth lord going in the 12th house should indicate that she is unfortunate and it will be situated in libra should indicate she is unfortunate which apparently is not the case 12th lord in 12th house should indicate she is spent thrift which is also not the case on the other hand if you take mercury to be in the ascendant it will be 9th lord in the ascendant which gives great fortune that she was and despite her policy being criticized she was i believe reelected as well once there was a bombing in the hotel she was there in the hotel but she was not hurt right? so these good things are there 12th lord in the ascendant if it is afflicting the ascendant if it is afflicted in the ascendant indicates problem but mercury as a 12th lord in the ascendant i don't believe is much problematic as such the result is as mercury in ascendant does indicate that she is intelligent and visionary which i 
believe she was right though i am i have not read it somewhere uh, i have read very much very little about her but from whatever type of life she is having it's very clear that she should have been a, she is a visionary right we know that second thing that is happening is venus is coming from the second house to first house now venus coming from second house to first house now as lagna lord in lagna it is very good right in the ascendant in the rashi chart it will be ascendant lord in the second house which makes dana yoga right i have already told you that mars should not be taken in the 11th house otherwise it will be second lord in the 11th house and it will be second lord aspecting the second house also that will make make a stronger dana yoga which should be at par with henry ford or richard branson which is not the case if you are just taking lagna lord to be in the second house that will make dana yoga but of a smaller level this dana yoga is suitable to a politician that she was right so apparently we can not say that she was poor right but if you compare both of the combinations second lord going in the 11th house close to his digbal house i'm talking about mars second lord going in the 11th house close to his digbal house aspecting the second house back these three good combination should indicate a higher level of dana yoga that she is not having only lagna lord in the second house does indicate a lower level of dana yoga that she is actually having right so you say this is also a thing right like i believe the problem that is happening in astrology is that people know the combinations but people don't know the extent of combination right people know that this is dana yoga this is dana yoga this is dana yoga but which dana yoga will give how great level of wealth that you don't understand because certainly if you see the horoscope of richard branson or henry ford you will see many people having normal life having more dana yogas than richard branson or henry ford but they are not that successful because people don't know the extent of yogas right i always say the quality of yoga the level of yoga the level of result that the yoga can produce and when to apply the yoga when not to apply the yoga you should know very properly otherwise it will be problematic right so when you take mars to be in the 11th house it is second lord in 11th house it is second lord very close to his digbal house it is second lord aspecting the second house it makes a great dana yoga that is not the case right venus in the second house does that venus in the second house lagna lord in the second house also indicate that person is very much attached to his family and as i told you she is one of the very rare examples of good marital life which is true if you take venus to be in the second house and it will not be true if you take venus to be in the first house because venus from first house will also be influencing the seventh house which gives the person high libido and that high libido is detrimental for marriage which is not the case her marital life was very good on the other hand venus is the lord of the eighth house if you take venus to be in the second house once again the standard principle right eighth lord aspecting the eighth house should give her a long life she lived up to 87 years of age on the other hand if you take venus to be in the ascendant it will be ascendant lord in the ascendant so it will not indicate short life either so this result is not applicable as such this was shripati system if you apply the kp system the change in rahu moon setup we have already explained is there the change of moon coming to 10th house we have already explained is there the change of mars coming to the 11th house we have already explained is there the change of mercury going to the 12th house i have already explained is there the only thing is venus remains in the second house right correct if we just quickly use the dashantra dasha because i cannot just do the analysis right though initially i told you that we will only do the analysis we will not apply the dashantra dasha but then i realized that if i don't explain to you the dashantra dasha you will not understand properly because the bhava result is not only analysis right the bhava result is analysis and whatever comes through analysis should also be seen in dasha right so because like you know as as we have seen in the case of rahu in the previous case in the case of agatha christi rahu in the 7th house rahu in the 6th uh, house both will indicate the event right so then to conclude how do you know this planet have done the event right there can be many planets indicating the event when you know the event you will know for certain that yes this planet have done the event right but how do you decide out of many planets which planet have done the event if event have already happened you find from dasha antar dasha in which dasha antar dasha event have happened is clear indication to that this planet have made the event happen second thing is signification for example if saturn is giving you profession because saturn indicates hard work also there will be hard work in profession so there can be success but success will come after hard work so the trait of planet by the activation of the trait of planet or by the event happening in the dasha of the planet you understand that the planet have given me the event otherwise how will you understand 
there can be many planets how will you understand that you are using the correct dasha or your analysis is going in the correct path this is the way that you apply there was a there was a student of mine very early around i believe uh, 2009 2008 we met someone and i told him this principle that to decide this planet is giving the result uh, shwetanshu was his name to decide he became a good astrologer also wrote books etc uh, to decide to know which planet have give the event this is the principle that you should use right so after that i am telling it in this video only i believe right in one to classes i must have told i just recall the incident that have happened right coming to the horoscope so right in the beginning 1923 to 1930 major event i don't have any major event as such 1930 to 1950 she is working as a research chemist and she loses bid for parliament this is a period of venus now if you take venus to be in the lagna which is happening with sripati system lagna lord and lagna should indicate only success success in 1947 she is starting with a new career as a research chemist which she does not pursue and in 1949 she loses social status by losing a bid for parliament which are not traits of lagna lord and lagna at all lagna lord in second house with gulik can indicate that right that it is indicating as well another planet is moon 1956 to 1966 1956 to 1966 there is one period there is one result gain of social status in 1961 it is happening gain of social status appointed joint parliamentary secretary joint parliamentary secretary you see moon in the 11th house will all uh, moon as a 10th lord in 11th house should also indicate gain from profession 10th as 10th lord in 10th house should also indicate gain from profession but once again the quality of the event you go deeper into quality of event joint parliament secretary she became 10th lord in 10th house should give an obstructed high level of success this is not the result joint parliamentary secretary this is not the result this result is more befitting to 10th lord in 11th house which does indicate gain from profession But eleventh house is not a good supporter for Raj Yoga, so that Raj Yoga is not that great. Between nineteen sixty six to nineteen seventy three, in nineteen seventy, she is becoming minister of education. In nineteen seventy, she is becoming minister of education. Now Mars, if you take in eleventh house, it is making Dhan Yoga should indicate a lot of wealth. A major event related to wealth is not written right here as such. right what is happening is she is becoming a minister of education if you take mars to be in the 12th house where he is with sun right sun being the significator of governmental positions does indicate her position as you know getting the position as you know minister of education as such right so this is also indicated Though you will use applicable dasha, this result will become more clear. These, these, you know, one two results in between is something that is not very straight to the point with Vimshotri. That's why I don't use it. But what to do? <laughs> in a YouTube video only, I can teach only this much to you. So the point. Now, I just told you that Moon as tenth lord in tenth house should give very phenomenal professional results, which is not happening. So in the moon period, when we were discussing nineteen fifty six to nineteen sixty six, I told that moon should be in the eleventh house. The next period is of Rahu, nineteen seventy three to nineteen ninety one. It is a planet in the tenth house, and I told you, Rahu as a malefic in tenth house should give great success, unhurdled success. You know, great name, fame, power, position it gives. Right, initially in the starting of our horoscope analysis, uh, the starting analysis of our horoscope, I told this point. What is happening between nineteen seventy three to nineteen ninety one? There is gain of social status. She becomes a party leader. Eleventh February nineteen seventy five and fourth May nineteen seventy nine. She becomes a prime minister. Prime minister, the epitome of profession that she reaches. Right, she is known as first female prime minister, I believe, if I am not incorrect. But on twenty second November nineteen ninety, fag end of the dasha, when she enters into sandhi, she. resigned from her post as prime minister the well known result rahu at the end of the dasha also takes away from you what he gets right but not permanently as such right so and this is almost 
after that you know because it is quite in age right so after that i don't believe she have joined again and uh, have she 1990 yeah only up to 1990 she remained in office and after that she was succeeded by john major right so rahu by the end of the dasha and also you see when you take rahu to be in the 10th house in the house of profession a planet in the house indicates major karma related to the house so it is bit natural that you say that it is the end of the professional karma right in may 1979 she you no know, resigns right and uh, she remains in office up to 1990 right so it gives the result right at this point of time it gives the results right and the dasha is all up to 1991 So, nineteen ninety, she resigns. The karma related to profession is finished. The age is also much there, right? So, though you can say that Rahu by the end of the dasha is giving bad result, but for normal people, it is not end of it, right? It gives the bad result. People can rise up again. For her horoscope, because it is a malefic situated in the tenth house, who is giving the result of Saturn indicator of karma, it does indicate that professional karma is over. So, by the age of nineteen ninety, she it is the last time that she is having in office, and after that, she does not join. She is born in nineteen twenty five. Nineteen ninety is quite an age. All right, so that's correct. So phenomenal success, right? Planet in the tenth house should indicate phenomenal success. If you take moon to be in the tenth house, which is happening with the Chalit Chakra, right? It is not justifying with the Dasha. Whereas when you take Rahu to be in the tenth house, indicating phenomenal success, that is very crystal clear with Dasha as well, right? Further, she dies in two thousand thirteen, so she do not live up to two thousand twenty six as such. She dies in the Saturn period itself, right? So these were all the events. So we understand, right? We understand that how the events and analysis of horoscope is telling better if you don't use Chalit Chakra, right? This is what I recommend. This is what I propagate. Don't use Chalit Chakra because, and you see. because i am not here to you see my approach is that as i must have told in the previous video my approach is that you know those who trust only deserve so my point is very clear whenever i discuss i always say that if you trust me you trust that shubham is not using chali chakra he says that it does not work just trust right but still because you know uh, we are in field of knowledge and uh, you know it, 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 in the field of knowledge trust does not work right much the person will have question right scholarly field the person will have question and that question is to be answered so i have made this video but my approach is that one should have trust that is the particular reason you see what i can do is for all of these horoscopes i can calculate the applicable dasha and i can do all the calculations that i do in my setup and then i will be able to show you in a better way how chalit chakra does not work but then using my super powers i don't believe that it is you know that great a thing you know to do this right so i don't i believe that okay even I, if i use the weakest of the tool i can prove that chalit chakra does not work using the strongest of the tool is not the case in this four horoscopes it is very clear but let me tell you my opinion is not based on such horoscopes right my opinion is based on my practice right so i do the horoscope of clients there i don't use chalit chakra i give predictions predictions come true and for many years i have noticed that what if i have used the chalit chakra would the result have been the same would the result have been correct and i have found the result would not have been the same and the result would not have been correct so it is testified by my experience also and i have also explained it in the video that how chalit chakra does not work i have always told that i don't use chalit chakra you may be following a person who uses chalit chakra and who recommends using chalit chakra if you do so please 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 request this from my side for your betterment because your betterment is my only purpose follow one person and follow only him shraddhaan labte nara have faith and trust on one person even if i am not the person it does not matter but just follow one person because you will try to ride on two boats you will reach nowhere 
So if you believe a person, if you trust a person, follow that person wholeheartedly, that will lead you to salvation, emancipation, knowledge, realization, truth. Right. My opinion is that I don't use Chalit Chakra. I have never used Chalit Chakra and the predictions that I give, I have been well satisfied with that. When you see from research perspective, that is Chalit Chakra valid, is Chalit Chakra applicable? The answer comes as that. The answer comes as that. The Chalit Chakra is not dependable. The Chalit Chakra is not reliable. Chalit Chakra does not work. Anyone who is using Chalit Chakra to make predictions is either ignorant of the astronomical facts or ignorant of the basic structure of astrology or have some lack in understanding or they cannot segregate the different type of results, what result is coming from Bhava, what result is coming from house, how to know the result is coming from the planet, what is the extent of the result, what is not the extent of the result, they are not able to segregate into it. For example, one may not be able to segregate the, the type of success that 10th Lord in 10th should give and 10th Lord in 11th should give because both of them indicate success, but what type of? The type of Dhan Yoga that uh, in the horoscope of Margaret Thatcher, Lagna Lord in 2nd house, what type of Dhan Yoga it will indicate? And Mars in the 11th house, what type of Dhan Yoga it will indicate? Those who cannot differentiate between it, they certainly can use Chalit Chakra and can advocate Chalit Chakra as well. But those who can differentiate, someone like me, we can never do it. Why? That I have explained. Right? And if you take my words, if, if you follow my advice, my advice will be not to use Chalit Chakra. If you want to do good predictions, if you want to remain true, to the words and the hard work of our sages, then Chalit Chakra should not be used, is my simple, straight, unflinching opinion. Thank you.